Cherubim, or cherubs, are angelic beings who participate in God's worship and praise. The cherubim are mentioned in the Bible for the first time in Genesis chapter 3, verse 24. Satan was a cherub before his rebellion. Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 12 through 15, NKJV. Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre, and say to him, Thus says the Lord God, You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, the sardius, topaz, and diamond, beryl, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your tambrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created, till inequity was found in you. Many cherubim were depicted in the tabernacle and temple, as well as their articles. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 5, TLV and above it cherubim of glory overshadowing the mercy seat, but it is not now possible to speak in detail about these things. 1 Kings chapter 6, verses 23-35 through 35. Also in the inner sanctuary he made two cherubim of olive wood, each ten cubits high. Five cubits was the one wing of the cherub, and five cubits the other wing of the cherub. From the end of one wing to the end of the other wing were ten cubits. The other cherub was ten cubits. Both the cherubim were of the same measure and the same form. The height of one cherub was ten cubits, and so was the other cherub. He placed the cherubim in the midst of the inner house, and the wings of the cherubim were spread out so that the wing of the one was touching the one wall, and the wing of the other cherub was touching the other wall. So their wings were touching each other in the center of the house. He also overlaid the cherubim with gold. Then he carved all the walls of the house round with carved engravings of cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers, inner and outer sanctuaries. He overlaid the floor of the house with gold, inner and outer sanctuaries. For the entrance of the inner sanctuary he made doors of olive wood, the lintel and five-sided doorposts. So he made two doors of olive wood, and he carved on them carvings of cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers, and overlaid them with gold. And he spread the gold on the cherubim and the palm trees. So also he made for the entrance of the nave four sided doorposts of olive wood and two doors of cypress wood. The two leaves of the one door turned on pivots, and the two leaves of the other door turned on pivots. He carved on it cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers, and he overlaid them with gold evenly applied on the engraved work. Chapters 1 and 10 of the book of Ezekiel describe the four living creatures, Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 5, as the same beings as the cherubim. Each had four faces, a man, a lion, an ox, and an eagle, as well as four wings. The cherubim had the likeness of a man in their appearance. Two of these cherubim's wings were used for flight, while the other two were used to cover their bodies. The cherubim appeared to have the shape or likeness of a man's hand beneath their wings. The imagery in Revelation chapter 4, verses 6-9 through 9, appears to describe cherubim as well. The cherubim's purpose is to magnify God's holiness and power. Throughout the Bible, this is one of their primary responsibilities. In addition to praising God, they serve as a visible reminder of God's majesty and glory, as well as His ever-present presence among His people. What a terrible situation would have been if Adam had eaten of the tree of life and so had been perpetually established in his fallen state. God sent a contingent of glorious and trusted cherubim to guard access to the tree to prevent that. We don't know what Adam thought when he saw those glorious cherubim for the first time in human history. Perhaps the emotions that come to mind are awe, fright, and wonder. In other sections of the Bible, we are told that how people reacted to seeing angels. Zechariah, for example, in Luke chapter 1, verses 11 through 13. Then to the right of the incense altar, an angel of the Lord appeared to him. Zechariah was troubled and overcome with fear. The angel said to him, Don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. Your wife Elizabeth will have a son, and you will name him John. 
Adam realized that his transgression had cut him off from the company and presence of a holy God. Oddly enough, the next occurrence of the cherubim in the Bible involves recovering what was lost. Exodus 25 gives Moses specific and detailed instructions on how to make several pieces of furniture for the tabernacle. What an incredible sight it must have been to see the cherubim associated with God's very presence. According to those two Bible passages, the cherubim's primary responsibility appears to be to declare man's sinfulness and to protect God's presence from sinful men. The cherubim reminded him that he had broken God's law. Once a year, the high priest of Israel would be permitted to enter the Holy of Holies to gaze upon the mercy seat. I'm sure he thought to himself on each occasion, I don't belong here in God's holy presence because I am a sinner. Cherubim are real and powerful beings. However, in the Bible, cherubim were frequently used to represent heavenly things. At God's command, they were incorporated into the design of the Ark of the Covenant and the Tabernacle. The cherubim then rise in preparation for the departure. While Ezekiel 10 is difficult to understand, one point stands out. Cherubim are associated with God's radiance. This chapter, which involves angelic beings, is one of the Bible's most cryptic and yet evocative passages about God's grandeur. It should be read carefully and with prayer. Few other chapters in the Bible convey a sense of God's majesty and glory to the reader. While the seraphim and cherubim belong to different hierarchies and are shrouded in mystery in the Bible, they share one trait. They are constantly praising God. However, as magnificent as angels and heavenly beings are, they pale in comparison to our heavenly Lamb, the Lord of glory, before whom all powers in heaven and on earth bow in holy worship and breathless adoration, for the choir master, to the tune of the Lilies of the Covenant. A Psalm of Asaph Hear us, O shepherd of Israel, who leads Joseph like a flock. You who sit enthroned between the cherubim, shine forth. Psalm chapter 80, verse 1 The Lord reigns, let the nations tremble. He sits enthroned between the cherubim, let the earth shake. Psalm chapter 99, verse 1 God's glory will not be denied, and every heavenly being bears silent or vocal witness to God's majesty. The cherubim did more than just keep those who had no right to be there out of God's most holy place. They also guaranteed the high priest's right to enter the holy place with blood as the people's representative to God. He and he alone was permitted to enter the Lord's inner sanctuary. By right of redemption and in accordance with the status of believers, each true child of God now has direct access to the presence of God through Jesus as a believer priest. Cherubim will not deny the throne to the most humble Christian. They assure us that we can approach with confidence because of Christ's work on the cross. The temple veil has been torn. As Paul says, Ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. Further, Peter assures us, Ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. The inner sanctuary of God's throne is also open to those who have repented of sin and trusted Christ as Savior. However, the cherubims are not the only hierarchy of angels. To see the other kinds of angels, click here.